fundamental human rights that every living soul on this planet should inherit by birthright. It's an unyielding resistance against the oppressive, suffocating grip of occupation and the callous denial of the most basic human dignity. Just as the civil rights movement in the United States fought against the chains of racial discrimination, so too do the Palestinian people strive to shatter the chains of occupation and tyranny. Never forget, my friends, that the Palestinians, much like African Americans in the United States, have been subjected to a heart-wrenching history of suffering and torment. The birth of Israel in 1948 brought forth the mass expulsion and dispossession of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from their ancestral homes and land. This is a historic injustice that continues to haunt the lives of Palestinians to this very day. The situation in Palestine serves as a brutal reminder of the consequences of colonialism and the ruthless dispossession of indigenous people. It is an agonizing reminder that the fight for justice knows no borders and we must stand united in solidarity with all oppressed people, whether they reside in the United States, South Africa, or anywhere around the world. Let's be unequivocally clear, advocating for the rights of the Palestinian people is not synonymous with denying the rights and security of the Jewish people. The fight for justice in Palestine is not an assault on any particular group, but an unwavering stand against the policies of a Zionist state that has for far too long stripped Palestinians of their rights. We must remember that numerous Jewish voices also resound in the calls for justice and peace in Palestine, and their voices must not be silenced. In our relentless pursuit of justice for the Palestinian people, we must also acknowledge that it is in the best interest of the entire world to seek a just and enduring solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It is a pursuit in the name of peace, stability, and the dignity of all mankind. But let me underscore this. The battle for justice in Palestine is not merely a political struggle, it's an elemental moral battle. It's the fight for the most basic human rights of a people who have suffered these injustices for far too long.
thousands of Americans is stuck in Gaza. What is wrong with you? How is this possible? I want to say how insane and painful and scary it is to work and serve in a space where we have a, a member Yeah. <laughs> 
discrimination built on the backs of black and brown people that continues to incarcerate black and brown men every single day. We will not take moral clarity from a nation that murdered millions of people in the Middle East that committed some of the most heinous crimes against Iraqis and Afghan and people in Afghanistan.
future without colonialism. Palestine, Palestine, where a valiant people have always existed, where survivors and fighters continue to affirm that they belong to a land upon which there is a life worth living. for their next demographic threat called her baby girl Janine and did you hear Amne Muna screaming behind their prison bars as they tear gassed her cell we are returning to Palestine I am an Arab woman of color and we come in all shades of anger but you tell me this womb inside of me will only bring you your next terrorist beard wearing, gun waving, towel head, sand nigger you tell me I send my children out to die but those are your copters, your F-16s in our sky I am an Arab woman of color and we come in all shades of anger so who's that brown woman screaming in a demonstration? sorry, should I not scream? I forgot to be your every orientalist dream Genie in a bottle, belly dancer, harem girl, soft-spoken Arab woman. Yes, master, no master. Thank you for the peanut butter sandwich is raining down on us from your F-16s, master. Yes, my liberators are here to kill my children and call them collateral damage. I am an Arab woman of color and we come in all shades of anger. So let me just tell you, this womb inside of me will only bring you your next rebel. She'll have a rock in one hand and a Palestinian flag in the other. I am an Arab woman of color. Beware, beware my
supremacy demands a perfect victim to smile and be peaceful as they violently dispossess us of our ancestral lands, violently burn down our homes, violently poison our drinking water, violently lay highways through our thriving communities, violently bomb our hospitals and our places of worship, violently exploit our labor and our time and our talent, violently destroy our crops, violently strip us of our right to affirm our gender and decide who we can love, violently tell us that we have no value if we are disabled and cannot produce for them, violently harm us for existing in fat bodies, violently narrowly defining health and then blaming us for our disparities, violently using our taxes for wars the world over, and then they tell us that they cannot afford social safety nets at home, violently planting less trees in our hood and less grocers up the block, then violently deciding that they want to live in our hood and suddenly find the money for trees and grocers and axe throwing and breweries and coffee shops and green spaces and 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 but the thing is there are no perfect victims and there are no perfect people there's just the fundamental right to self-determination and freedom to thrive in the lands that we inherited and there are oppressors who oppose that right define yourself for yourself determine who and what you value and what you stand for and stand firmly on that don't get distracted with the man for perfect victimhood from folk who wish you dead and violent choose to never see your humanity. tax money. That's why I pay over there to the fucking United States of America, pay Israel to fucking bomb, to bomb, bomb my family. That's what Biden wants. But you know what? We will survive. This is our country. This is our time. We don't give a fuck about what you're doing because this is our country. We got you. You see all those people? They didn't leave. Because you know why? Because we are white people. So my message to the world, you failed us. You failed the Palestinians. If we were Ukrainian, we have a, we have a yellow hair, green eyes, white color. Everybody gonna be stand with Ukraine, but no fucking body stand with Palestinians. You know, for the whole fucking world. Fuck you. for you. How many innocent Palestinian civilians, men, women and children, does Israel have to slaughter? How many war crimes does Israel have to commit? How much death and destruction does Israel have to visit on the people of Gaza and Palestine before you will call for and impose sanctions on Israel 
and expel the Israeli ambassador from this country and call for the immediate referral of Israel to the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity and war crimes. Because in front of the world, by their own admission, Israel is committing war crimes. They have stated it publicly. This isn't a matter of opinion. They declared their intention to force, through the threat of military bombardment, more than a million, and it is now well more than a million, Palestinians from their homes in northern Gaza and ethnically cleanse them. A crime against humanity. They stated publicly and have done it in front of the eyes of the world the intention to deny 2.2 million people water, electricity, medicine, life-saving equipment in front of the eyes of the world and they're doing it. And every minute, children are being slaughtered by their artillery, the relentless bombardment of residential complexes, of hospitals, of schools, of civilian infrastructure. They just go on and on and on. And you do nothing. Nothing. Words of concern. But no action to hold them to account. And it is clearly premeditated war crimes and genocide. Genocide. We have... Jewish people in the United States and Canada, around the world, and Israel, calling it genocide. Scholars, academics, saying this is genocidal. Let me quote you a few things. Israeli general, quote, human animals must be treated as such. There will be no electricity and no water. There will only be destruction. Yoav Gallant, a minister, says we are fighting human animals. We will, quote, act accordingly. We will remove, quote, every restriction on the idea. Smotrich, another minister, there is no such thing as the Palestinians. The president of Israel refers to the people of Gaza and says they are all responsible. Before October the 7th, Netanyahu appeared, appeared in front of the UN General Assembly with a map of Israel that had removed all references to Palestine. A clear declaration of intent to destroy the Palestinian uh, people uh, and steal all of their land. 6,000 Palestinians killed between 2008 and before October the 7th. Thousands of Palestinians hostage in administrative detention without trial. When are you going to move beyond words of concern and impose sanctions and expel the Israeli ambassador of this apartheid murderous state? Let 
me be very frank, we have to say the truth. The Israeli lobby, the Jewish lobby are by far too strong and too aggressive. The Israeli propaganda and the Jewish propaganda in recent years made it as a systematic method. Whenever anybody dares to raise questions or to criticize Israel, he is immediately and automatically labeled as anti-Semite and then he has to shut his mouth because after this, what can he say? This vicious circle should be broken and I really hope that great, great politicians like Mrs. Omar and others will be courageous enough to stand in front of those accusations and to say, yes, it is legitimate to criticize Israel. Yes, it is legitimate to raise questions and this does not mean that we are anti-Semites. We are not ready to play this game anymore in which they shut our mouths with those accusations which in most of the cases are hollow. Americans serving in Congress, Mr. Chair, and my perspective is needed here now more than ever. I will not be silenced, and I will not let you distort my words. Folks forget I'm from the city of Detroit, the most beautiful blackest city in the country where I learned to speak truth to power even if my voice shakes. Trying to bully or censor me won't work because this movement for a ceasefire is much bigger than one person. It's growing every single day. There are millions of people across our country who oppose Netanyahu's extreme extremism and are done watching our government support collective punishment and the use of white phosphorus bombs that melt flesh to the bone. They are done watching our government, Mr. Chair, supporting cutting off food, water, electricity, and medical care to millions of people with nowhere to go. Like me, Mr. Chair, they don't believe the answer to war crimes is more war crimes. The refusal of Congress and the administration to acknowledge Palestinian lives is chipping that way at my soul. Over 10,000 Palestinians have been killed. Majority, majority were children. But let me be clear. My criticism has always been of the Israeli government and Netanyahu's actions. It is important to separate people and governments, Mr. Chair. No government is beyond criticism. The idea that criticizing the government of Israel is anti-Semitic sets a very dangerous precedent, and it's being used to silence diverse voices speaking up for human rights across our nation. Do you realize what it's like, Mr. Chair, for the people outside the chamber right now, listening in agony to their own government dehumanizing them? To hear the President of the United States, we help elect, dispute death tolls as we see video after video of dead children and parents under rubble. Mr. Chair, do you know what it's like to fear rising hate crimes, to know how Islamophobia and anti-Semitism makes us all less safe, and worry that your own child might suffer the horrors that six-year-old Wadia did in Illinois. I can't believe I have to say this, but Palestinian people are not disposable. We are human beings. Just like anyone else, my city, my grandmother, like all Palestinians, just wants to live her life with freedom and human dignity we all deserve. Speaking up to save lives, Mr. Chair, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial in this chamber. 
the cries of the Palestinian and Israeli children sound no different to me. What I don't understand is why the cries of Palestinians sound different to you all. I mourn the 
the refugee camps that were massacred, bombed, and neglected? How could one believe in Jesus, yet deny that he was a Palestinian? How could one say that they're a proud Christian, but be blind to the fact that there was no settler colony of Israel when he was alive? When people ask me where I'm from, I say Palestine, and they look at me confused. Jesus was not a white man, and he did not have blue eyes. Jesus came from the land of milk and honey. I mourn each time I book a flight to Palestine, for I know that it is not recognized. I mourn our airports that were destroyed. I mourn each time a Palestinian travels, for I know what that entails. I mourn each time they strip, search, harass, and control us. I mourn all of the lives that were lost on a checkpoint because they were denied access to receive medical care. I mourn all the mothers that had to give birth to a live or dead baby at the checkpoint. I mourn every time they dehumanize us. I mourn each time someone asks me where I'm from and I say Palestine, and they reply, where is that? I mourn the segregation walls, for I saw a time before they were built. I mourn each time they ask me for my chawiya. I mourn all the Palestinians unable to visit family or friends because of the walls. I mourn all the cities that were bombed. I mourn every time they tried to make our existence more palatable for you to care about. I mourn each time I hear the word Palestine, for I know she mourned many times in her lifetime and does not know when it will end. I hope to stop mourning during my lifetime. country I am not from? Is it because the heart chooses what to feel? Humanity that binds us to realize your oppression is my problem. Your pain, my pain. Your struggle can have these fists. I live in America, the land of the free they call it. You live in Palestine, stripped away from land we know. I wake up to an alarm clock. You wake up to the sound of bombs. I wake up to Baba saying, Ali, you're going to be late to school. You wake up to Teta saying, Habib, hurry up if you want to live. I brush my teeth, you brush off the wound. I wash my face, you wash away the blood. I wear my Jordans, you wear your heart on top of your skin. I go to school, you go to war. I watch you on the news, you are the news. I scream free Palestine, you scream help. I scream free Palestine, then I easily forget about you. I show up to parties, you show up to funerals. I hold an iPhone and you hold caskets. We are both kids of the same age, but I am privileged and you are oppressed. If we lived in my fantasy, I'd be Peter Pan. I'll pick you up and off to Neverland. If we lived in a magical world, I would turn bombs into your wishes. I would turn your broken house into a golden palace. Your tears into chocolate syrup so that when they're falling down your cheeks, you end up tasting something sweet. I would make Palestine, Palestine once again for you. I would turn tanks into stone, would turn guns into plastic. I would turn IDF soldiers into a Loompa Loompas. And we would dunk it until joy itself became jealous of us. In a perfect world, I would do all these things for you. But the world, far from perfect. And me, only 17 on the other side of the world, will wake up to an alarm clock. And you will once more wake up to the sound of bombs. You will scream help, the world will scream free Palestine. Then check social media, and we will watch that crazy football game. And we will continue to let the system distract us from ever helping you. You scream help, we scream free Palestine, then we turn the other way. I'll keep getting to live, you will keep dying, until this world decides, beautiful boy, that 
that you are somebody worth saving. 